Facing the fall, many students in our area start heading back to school next week. And that means lots of questions, and not just about COVID-19 and masks, but their health and well-being are definitely top of mind for most parents. Mayo Clinic pediatrician Dr. Therese Anderson joins us this morning to talk more about what parents can expect having that conversation with their children and maybe school administrators. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. So we know parents are thinking about this every day, a lot on their minds as they head back to school. Let's start off with school physicals. Yeah, absolutely an integral part of going back to school. I certainly re recommend making sure that your children are up to date. We know this past year hasn't been normal for anyone. So a lot of times that normal well child was just simply missed throughout the year. So this is a great time to check in, get any question answered about the return to school, and then check on those routine things like vision and hearing, making sure we're setting children up for the best possible school year without any hindrance to their learning. Who needs one? And why, obviously, is it important in addition to everything you just said? Sure. So I think any school age children should have their well child. After age three, we recommend yearly well child. Obviously, before that, it's a little bit higher frequency based on age. So I certainly recommend making sure we have that well child um, check yearly. It's also really important to make sure we're up to date on just those routine immunizations, as I said, hearing and vision. And then certainly for my student athletes, making sure we've done their sports physical and thought about all the steps we need to do to get them ready to perform the sports of their choice this coming school year. I know with that, routines are key, but oftentimes can be hard, especially that transition into one. Waking up early, they might not have had an alarm clock all year long. Any tips on that transition? Yes, absolutely. This is probably one of the big topics I end up spending a good amount of time on during these well child checks this past year. Um, many children have found their routine being altered um, through, you know, either learning at home or just simply different routines at home um, with accommodations from parents working from home as well. So, you know, as we're going back to school this year, it's important to get that routine set. I know some parents only have this coming weekend. Some parents maybe have a little bit longer a week, and this is a great opportunity to seize that time. I recommend going ahead and starting to work towards that school day routine. So slowly moving that um, bedtime a little bit sooner to when we need it to get about eight to 10 to 12 hours even of sleep a night. And then also moving that wake time a little earlier so we match the routine for the school year. I think that's really key to getting that routine set early because it is really hard to make those shifts. Um, you know, if we go from just... Saturday where we're waking up at 11 a.m. And then Sunday we're expected to go to bed at nine, wake up at maybe six. Um, so doing that as soon as possible is really important because sleep is very important for all of us to be able to function, but especially our students. Oh, I hear you. Our schedules are all over the place when you work in news. I'm sure the same with medicine. Uh, let's, Absolutely. <laughs> let's talk about the topic of vaccines. As a pediatrician, what are you hearing from parents? What are you hearing from your patients? It's a great question. So first of all, the well child check is a great opportunity just to make sure we're up to date on our routine immunizations that are recommended for age appropriate. So just as simple as making sure that that pre-K or that kindergartner is up to date on their measles, mumps, rubella, their chicken pox shot, making sure our seventh graders have their tetanus booster that we've talked about starting the meningitis series. Same for my pre-college students or my late high school students, making sure they've had that second meningitis booster. If they're going off to college in the fall, making sure that we talk about, do they need the meningitis B vaccine, which is an additional vaccine that may be warranted. So that's a great time just to talk about those routine immunizations. Obviously, in the setting of the COVID-19 <laughs> pandemic, the big topic has been the COVID-19 vaccine, which is um, indicated for children over the age of 12 for the Pfizer vaccine. So I'm obviously getting a lot of questions about that as well. What are your I, I, from parents, I'm sure, what are children saying about this shot? I think a lot of my young adults and adolescents um, are very interested in what we have to say. They have questions of their own. This is the age in which I encourage them to start taking control of their health as well. So I have many of them that are coming in with questions of their own. Is it safe? Should I get it? Um, do I have any risk factors that could mean I you know, could have a worse outcome from COVID-19? Um, and so I like to take that time to address all of those questions for both parents, but children as well. 
I am absolutely recommending as a pediatrician that all eligible children be vaccinated for COVID-19. I fully recognize that parents and children may have many questions and hesitations regarding the vaccine. And I think that the well child um, is a great time to address that. Even outside of that, if your child is not due for a well child, simply having that conversation with your pediatrician or your family doctor is really important to make sure that you have the best information for you and your family to make that decision. Dr. Anderson, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, us this you're morning. welcome. We appreciate it.